Hello, you're watching Health Day Now. I'm Mabel Jong. The American Society of Clinical Oncology, ASCO, has concluded its annual meeting. This year, the conference was again held virtually. Oncology specialists from around the world met to reveal advances in cancer research, treatment, and patient care. We're happy to have Dr. Lori Pierce here. She's joining us with her impressions on the conference. Dr. Pierce was the president of ASCO this year and a cancer radiation specialist at the University of Michigan. Dr. Pierce, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Ms. Young. It's very good to be here. Thank you for asking me to, to speak today. What were some of the advances you learned about that show great promise? Oh my gosh, we, we had so many amazing abstracts. Um, uh, over 2,500 were presented at the ASCO meeting, but certainly there was a significant focus on immunotherapies, uh, immunotherapies that made a significant difference in terms of disease-free survival and also progression-free survival for many types of cancers. We had um, an abstract that showed a significant improvement in disease-free survival for early stage lung cancer. Um, thanks to immunotherapy, we had advanced stage melanoma um, for those who had patients who were untreated, had unresectable or metastatic melanoma. We compared in the randomized trial using one immunotherapy versus two. So the standard was nivolumab. That was the one therapy versus nivolumab and adding relatinumab, which mm -hmm. has the ability to be able to block two different pathways, two different immune pathways. And that showed a significant benefit in progression-free survival. Um, we had a, an abstract with um, another immunotherapy in patients who had uh, nasopharyngeal cancer, uh, recurrent or metastatic nasopharyngeal cancer, um, another abstract for disease-free survival in patients who had resected kidney cancer, hmm. uh, for which uh, there's never been a trial before showing improvement, significant improvements with uh, immunotherapy. Um, also advanced esophageal cancer. So we had a, a range of uh, randomized trials showing significant um, benefits from immunotherapy for both early stage and advanced stage disease. And, and um, you know, it's interesting that uh, some people say, oh, it's just immunotherapy. Oh my gosh, it's immunotherapy. You know, this is a major advance um, that we have found that uh, these drugs can reinvigorate our immune system. The cancer cells had found ways to really shut down our immune system and these drugs um, release the immune system to be able to be very effective against cancer cells. So it's a, it's a very exciting time and yeah. there's a lot of focus on immunotherapy. So that was one area. Um, Please share how equity in cancer care was an overriding theme across this year's meeting. Oh, it's my pleasure to talk about that. Um, um, equity of care has been um, so important to ASCO for as long as ASCO has been ASCO. And it was very important to me as well. So when I was asked as the president elect to come up with a theme, I knew I wanted it to be based on equity because we have, we have all of these amazing therapies um, in oncology, but if they're not delivered equitably, um, if all the patients who need them um, cannot receive their therapy, then we've not done what we're supposed to do or what we need to do um, to promote health for all of our cancer patients. And so at this year's meeting, not only was the theme equity every patient every day everywhere, but we, we wove equity throughout the meeting. Um, you know, quite often, if you've been to our, our meetings in Chicago, you know that we have standalone sessions on equity and they're often not attended very well, not because people don't care, but because at the same time, you're, you're learning about immunotherapy, you're learning about this, you're learning about that, and you only can be in one place at one time. Um, and so I, we thought, okay, let's try to weave equity within these sessions. We, we also have standalone sessions, but we want to be able to weave um, equitable, the importance of equity of care into the sessions. And, and we were very successful in doing that. So this is a new model that we want to adopt to be able to bring the equity piece to the sessions where most of our members are attending. Mm. Now, the COVID-19 pandemic exposed the frailty of healthcare infrastructure, but did it also somehow enable unprecedented scientific collaboration in your community? Uh, absolutely. Um, there are so many um, uh, unfortunate aspects of COVID, but there are some silver linings. And the silver linings is that COVID didn't 
didn't create anything that wasn't there already. It exacerbated the inequities. Um, there were already inequities that were present um, in our communities and, and throughout the world. And, and we know that even though maybe some people were not as, as aware of that as others of us were aware. Um, everyone is now very aware of the inequities because uh, COVID really laid bare those inequities. Mm -hmm. And with that came a whole level of collaboration. Of course, we as, as cancer doctors, we collaborate globally. But here we had cancer doctors, we had infectious disease doctors, we had school of public, we had public health, we had a global community coming together to fight this uh, pandemic. And wherever you have more collaboration, you have greater power, you have greater ability to be able to improve outcomes. Mm -hmm. um, and that was clearly the case with, uh, with the pandemic and the way that, as you said, it brought communities and, and um, uh, groups together that perhaps were not already freely collaborating. All right, Dr. Lori Pierce, we thank you so much for your time. It has been a pleasure. There's so much more. Uh, I would love to talk with you, but uh, thank you for the time. I really appreciate it. We've been speaking with Dr. Lori Pierce, outgoing president of ASCO. And thank you for watching Health Day Now. I'm Mabel Jones.